Well, I want to uh, thank you for uh, attending again today. And again, my name is Marshall Terry. I am the executive director for the Virginia Government Employees Association. And I tell you, we have a challenge. In, we've had a challenge in time, but hopefully we, we are moving forward and getting out of the COVID. But anyway. This is the, we, the next session is the Virginia Retirement System, and I want to say I can't express my appreciation with all the questions that I get about the Virginia Retirement System, and most of them are good comments because I have to admire their customer service area. Uh, they are on the line, and we very seldom, it's occasionally we get something and usually it's completely out of the norm, but we always are able to get them an answer. We feed it through Jeannie, and um, so anyway, I just want to thank. But anyway, let me just introduce the speaker. The first one we'll have today is Michael Cooper, and he is the Chief Operating Officer, and I've met him at a number of their uh, board meetings, and we certainly are thankful for having him here. And uh, the second one is Robert Irvin. Met with him on a number of occasions as well. He's over the customer service area, which I just mentioned. And then our last contact is Jeannie Chenault, who is my main contact with uh, VRS, and she is the Director of Public Relations. And thank you very much for that introduction, and, and certainly thank you for having us here um, today. It's certainly great to be in person as we're back out now meeting with um, organizations such as yours. And so um, I first want to take this opportunity to um, thank you all and extend uh, uh, wishes from our Director, Trish. Bishop, who would normally be here, um, and uh, but Trish is traveling uh, at this time for uh, family matters, so um, it takes three of us to replace her. And if you know Trish, uh, there's no doubt it does take three of us uh, to to replace her. So, well, there's no replacing. It takes three of us to step in her shoes while she is away. Um, but again, her best wishes to you all, and many thanks to your uh, service and dedication to the Commonwealth uh, and for. Uh, all that you do for the citizens uh, of Virginia. So um, we've prepared some slides today. It's a lot of information, and so we're going to go through it as diligently as we can. But we always recognize, of course, that there may be um, follow-up questions. And so um, as time permits at the end of today, we will um, take those questions. Um, but we also have available at the table here forms where we encourage if you have any questions you didn't think about during the presentation or just didn't wish to raise your hand and ask that you'll please um, uh, place them on the paper and we always follow up and respond to those questions so um, please feel free to do so uh, I'd also mention as well as has been mentioned on a couple of instances already um, that we have John and Steve out in the hallway uh, here to answer any questions, uh, both from VRS and Mission Square. So um, if you haven't done so already, please stop by their tables and, um, and ask any questions that you may have about, uh, about your, your accounts uh, or benefits. Um, so our agenda for today, um, we have again, uh, we, we have a lot of information, but we've, we've put it into three buckets, if you will. So we'll start with some information, your action list, things that you can be doing and should be doing some overall VRS updates and then what are some next steps to uh, keep in mind and things thinking about as we go forward beyond today's uh, conference and before I turn it over to Robert I, I want to just take a moment to share with you all as you may have seen in our various publications if you've been out to our website um, VRS is celebrating its 80th uh, birthday this year um, in fact 1942 uh, was the beginning of what is now known as the Virginia retirement system, although uh, we do date back to 1908, uh, at which time it was the teacher retirement fund. And so um, we've had a lot of change over those uh, years, and uh, nevertheless, uh, we celebrate 80 years of serving those who serve others, which is why we're here today. And again, thank you for your service to the Commonwealth. And I will turn it over to Robert, and he will take us through our next set of slides. 
Michael. Um, very excited, as Michael mentioned, and, and when Marshall first talked to us about doing this. Now, what I didn't know is um, we were talking about Trish not being here, that this was going to be recorded, and I guarantee she's going to be looking at it. She's going to go out there and see what we said and see what we did, so I'm glad this evaluation cycle is over with because she, uh, she is very passionate about, uh, and I, I joke about it, but, but if you all have been to these sessions before, uh, she, she loves this stuff and is very focused on it, and she kind of transitions that over into the things that we do. So there's a lot of stuff we're going to cover. Uh, I'm excited from the customer service standpoint because I've, I've done this a bit and some of the familiar faces out there that, that I see knowing that um, where we've enhanced and some things that we've changed to make it more accessible and available uh, to you all as members, it, it's pretty exciting. So we'll, we'll jump into the discussions about uh, VRS opportunity and we're going to look at some of the, the the next steps and things that you can do to take action. So this very this very first slide is just a list of uh, available uh, activities and things that you can do as <coughs> excuse me as active members. You're going to hear me talk about this quite a bit. This claiming your account, claiming the my VRS account. Uh, then we'll go through kind of some some naming beneficiaries, some other functional tools, how to organize documents. Uh, uh, financial planning and financial wellness uh, kind of talk through uh, a lot of slides we'll keep it kind of informal in the conversation but as Michael mentioned if you have some detailed questions we'll, we'll try to address them um, as we go through it and really this is kind of the the, the list of actions that you can take uh, for, from from today's meeting and then move forward with uh, uh, especially when you go out there to the claim your account in my VRS Next slide. Okay. Claiming your account, and just kind of quick as a show of hands, how many people have actually gone out and logged into, raise your hands, logged into my VRS claim? Yeah, much different than a retiree group. <laughs> that's, that's. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it goes in cycles. Those are very frustrating weeks. You go out there, well, where am I at? And what's my status? And how much longer do I have to work? But, you know, I, I just, but it's, it's, it is a serious thing we, we encourage you to do. You, you have to claim that account for several reasons. Not only for your own uh, security and, and safety reasons, because nowadays things that go inactive and people don't use, others try to use for you. We have a very robust uh, security team, and Michael will probably mention this a little bit later on. But we want you to claim your account for me from the customer service standpoint because all the functionality and tools that are available out there. Uh, visit uh, your account periodically. That's another thing. Uh, a lot of times you'll, you'll log in and take a look at it or see what's out there. And again, if things are going well with work and well with your environment, you, you may not go back, back out there. But we encourage you to log in every so often to see what's available and look at your profiles and information out there on yourself. Uh, if you're not set up account, it's very easy to do. Uh, it's the best tool for, for your not only protection, but also for visibility of different uh, functions we see out there. Uh, you can also go to Social Security we ask you to do that too, kind of set up the account real early on, but you have that functionality to do that uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, once you set up your account, uh, you can easily navigate through my VRS, and I'll kind of give you some of the the uh, functions and tools that you'll see when you go out there. Uh, the retirement planner, a uh, uh, huge. You go out there and make a retirement plan, use the yes benefits estimator, and you can save that estimate, go back out there and look at it again. And if you've been out there, you'll see where it slides along and kind of lets you know where you are and where you are on full retirement and how many years you have after. So again, very intuitive, very easy to use. Um, let me see another key one. This, this financial wellness resource, I'll talk about that in a minute, a few years ago we implemented that. A great tool, provide opportunity for you to get some educational piece and, and putting your finances and financial planning together. And um, again, a uh, year ago, year and a half ago, online retirement, again, not encouraging anyone to leave and go into retirement, but we're ready for you if you choose to. But now uh, you can go online and fill out your own retirement application and hit submit. Your HR department will know you've done it, so it's not like you can go out there and do this yourself and not let anyone know, uh, because they have to, to validate back with us to ensure things stay on track. But again, online retirement is a, is a, is a huge event that we've, we've started again. The, the gist of this, if you look down here with the varetire.org, my VRS, is really to make the tools accessible and available to you whenever you want to, and uh, you can go out there and navigate and look around uh, kind of for yourself. Okay. 
hybrid retirement, and this is for those that are 2014 uh, uh, and, and after 2014 when, when hybrid plan came on board. Um, uh, now we focus on those who are, are not only hybrid members, but encouraging those members to maximize their retirement savings. Uh, the hybrid retirement plan was designed uh, with an auto escalation feature. So every three years, members uh, voluntary contributions to the hybrid 457 and, and, and um, deferred compensation plan account will automatically be increased uh, half a percent and it'll be done payroll deduction until reaching a maximum of 4%. Uh, the next auto escalation is coming up uh, uh, fairly soon, uh, January 2023. Uh, you have the option to opt out. We normally don't see that, but there's an opt out window communications out there for that. But uh, the auto escalation is a great way of, of increasing those uh, uh, resources in your retirement plan without really uh, taking notice of it. And you can definitely go out there. We ask you to manage that yourself. The hybrid plan is a good bit different from the plan one because you have to take active participation in managing uh, uh, kind of the, um, uh, the amounts and where you want those amounts to go to. And I think that window to opt out if you, if you choose to is now, starts September, runs through December, and if you don't opt out, that half a percent will automatically be escalated for you. You may always hear us say start saving now for tomorrow and, and saving, saving today. You can't start soon enough. Uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia or the COV, as you normally hear about 457 deferred compensation plan. Uh, how many of you participate in that savings opportunity? Several. Okay. That's another good show of hands. Okay. Uh, all salary or wage uh, state employees can participate in this program. helps you to realize your retirement goals potentially a little bit sooner, but definitely uh, builds into your retirement planning. In addition, if you qualify for the Virginia cash match plan, you receive a cash match uh, uh, from the state. And the cash match plan for salaried state employees, uh, the matching amount is 50% of the contributions uh, to the 457 plan. And it's not to exceed $20 uh, uh, <coughs> per pay date. Um, wage employees are not eligible for the cash match plan. So we encourage this because we don't want you to miss any opportunities to enroll uh, uh, and you can call the toll-free number to participate in that. But again, the big focus that we want to make sure everyone's aware of, you, you don't want to leave money on the table if, 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 if the match is there. You don't want to uh, wait until a later date. The sooner you start to put into it, whatever that amount is, it, it'll compound and over time uh, you, it, it helps you better prepare for that day where you can be sitting on the other side of the room with the retirees. Okay kind of thing. Okay, this, this is the kind of start early, and, and it shows kind of a graphic, and again, when you go online and look at some of these tools, it kind of shows, and I won't walk you through the specifics of uh, who saved what amount, but it, it kind of shows how it compounds over time, and, and it, it um, it, it's, it's part of that aspect of start saving now for, for tomorrow and the impact. And really, it's just a quick illustration that shows the difference of starting can, can make early. And I'll just kind of talk through the example of, of uh, we call them Sarah and Michael, uh, um, made $100 monthly contributions uh, and with a $40 employer match. Um, and over time, Sarah began saving early when she was, I think it says 25. And, um, you know, her, her match increase approximately at age 65 to 172,000 and Michael started at age 40 with that same and over time he only came to 94,700 so you take a look at that and basically what that lets you know is start early compounded over time you're going to have a greater outcome uh, in, in your retirement planning. But again, those tools are out there. It shows those graphics. You can play around with it. I think on the um, uh, on, on the DCP side, it, it's not so much a bar chart. There's mountain peaks and, and things that will pop up, and whether your mountain grows taller or higher than the mountain next to you, but you won't get an amount of money, but it's a mountain illustration of what that growth can do. So we strongly encourage you to go out there and take a look at those, because uh, again, we don't want you to leave money on the table. 
the variety of calculator tools that can help you uh, uh, plan, uh, boost your savings. There's a calculator for that. Um, the, the delay, if you delay in your calculation, and there's the mountain peaks that I talked about, and it's kind of the pay paycheck calculator that shows the change and the, the, the increases. Uh, Smart Step allows you to increase your voluntary contributions at a date that you choose. Uh, so again, we want you to use these tools. They're available. We have resources out there. And again, I think if, if you haven't had a chance to talk to either um, Steve or John as they're out there at the table, please do so today. And we also, from the customer service side of things, from our call center operation and counseling center, we have those resources available online. Uh, or you can call in. All right, here's an entertaining one that we kind of sometimes um, lose sight of when we're in the grind of the daily, daily work. Uh, updating your beneficiaries. Um, uh, critical piece, we often don't think about it until a, a, a significant emotional event in life happens, but we encourage you to update your beneficiaries because VRS is, is required to pay who's on record with us. And, um, the absence of doing that and updating it, life happens, life changes happen, and you just want to make sure you can go out, and you can go online and do this now, but uh, you go out online and, and, and make those changes and designate who you want your, uh, whether it's uh, your insurance or if you have a particular uh, plan in, in terms of your retirement planning, uh, what beneficiary will receive that money. And I'll tell this quick story uh, just to illustrate. We, we've had on occasions, and both Genius had to deal with it from the public relations standpoint because sensitivity from a customer service standpoint, I have to deal with it as, as, as a beneficiary may call in, but let's just say for instance, 22 years ago, um, I was married to person A uh, and, and left person A and I'm married to person B. I pass away, person B shows up and says, hey, I need the life insurance to pay for burial costs, I need his retirement plan, rent. VRS pulls it up and says, well, you need to resolve that with person A because that's who's designated as beneficiary. Yes, it's been 20 years ago, yes, it's been, but we are obligated to pay out person A. We can't get into that civil issue between the two. We pay out to person A, so person B now has to resolve that with person A and VRS is removed from it. So it's a simple thing to do. We get caught in a daily grind of working and consistent things that you're doing on a daily basis and you don't think about changing your beneficiary. But it's extremely important. It's easy to do and you can designate that. And I'm not in a person A or B category. Just, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> that's it. I just, that's just an illustration. I got some former co-workers out there. I see them grabbing their phone. Hey, Robert said at the meeting, before I get home, I'd be, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Basic group uh, life insurance, uh, more details are available in, in your uh, member handbook, but you receive basic group life coverage in, in, in the group we are third party administrator, Securian, uh, if you haven't heard the name before, but Securian is the, the group uh, that, that manages our life insurance. Um, natural death benefits equals to the credible compensation rounded up to the next highest thousand, and then it's doubled, so that's your base uh, salary, and then it doubles, so that's your natural death, accidental death, dismemberment uh, is, is also covered. Additional uh, accidental death benefits include seat belt, uh, um, uh, uh, felonious assault benefits. So there's a variety of things out there. It's in your member handbook, but you all have access to that as soon as you started uh, employment. Now, the, the additional uh, service that, that VRS, and we're the administrator of it, so we have administrative oversight with Securian, but this is an independent or separate plan that you enter, engage when uh, Securian directly yourself and make payments to. But it's an optional uh, group life. Um, <coughs> excuse me. 
It's expanded the optional life, and we've been working with uh, fin uh, securing financials. We'll be expanding the optional life insurance coverage availability to members, uh, and it'll go up to eight times your creditable compensation. So the window of opportunity right now is four times. It'll go up to eight. The window of opportunity to increase that, a lot of you all uh, uh, may have taken advantage of optional life when you first started employment. If you didn't, there was a narrow window that closed. Well, securing is going to open that back up. So if you've been employed for you know, 20, 30 years and missed it back, uh, back when you first started employment, you will have a window of opportunity to uh, uh, apply for and submit an application for optional life insurance. So that window of opportunity is, is not, is it? Okay. Public relations help me out, but that window of opportunity is, is, is going to be made available to you. Strongly encourage you to, to look at that because with all this going on, it sets up some uh, unique opportunities to get this coverage. Um, you don't have to currently participate in it. Um, uh, optional life insurance coverage, as I said, is, is multiplied times uh, four. Now it's going to go up to eight. Um, if you just go up one step, so if you have four now in optional life and you want to bump it up one, you, you do that fine. There's no underwriting or medical requirements that they're going to review uh, that you have to take. You'll just have that window of opportunity to do that. So I encourage you to go out there and take, take a look at it. It's the details are out on the website and then know the window of opportunity is uh, coming up from uh, October to November. And then once this closes, we're, we're back in the normal cycle. A new employee coming in has a window of opportunity to select it, but we won't go back and retro those that missed it. Okay. You remember benefit profiles? Uh, those should be coming out uh, in the next uh, few weeks. This is just kind of a summary of where you are, your plan, what you're in, expected uh, amounts, and, and again, uh, it's, you, you, it's, it's online access. So your employer will get a note from VRS saying that it's out there and available for you to take a look at. And you can go out and pull it up and it gives you your, your goal, your, your, your target in, in retirement, what it should be, projections, so your MBP is, you know, is, is a common term that you use, but your member benefit profile and your human resource department will be sending you an email explaining that oh, it's out there for you to log in and take a look at. Uh, we used to do a lot of mailings and send mailings out and sometimes people would look at it and sometimes oh, something else would be all right. But again, we're making these tools accessible to you online. Now, this is one we're extremely excited about. Uh, a few years ago, we launched a financial wellness and education uh, 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 platform. And uh, a few times, DHRM has sent out in their uh, quarterly updates, encouraging individuals to go out and see what's available uh, through VRS. But it's a financial wellness tool that you have access to. And our third party uh, uh, contract we work with, iCrad, developed it and tailored it specifically for, for, uh, for VRS. Uh, and you can access a host of financial wellness education and resources. Again, logging in through my VRS. And it's an open platform. It's two versions of it. You can just go in as a standard everyday person and go in and look at it. But you can also go in through my VRS once you set up your account uh, behind the firewall and they identify and recognize who you are as a state employee and the details about you. So someone in your family that's just interested in financial wellness, they can go out and look at this tool and look at some of the, but you as an employee can log in under your ID and it recognizes who you are and where you are. But it's interactive learning, there's different courses, it learns with you, so if you complete a few courses, whether it's around um, uh, uh, budget tools, uh, managing financial stress, uh, paying off debt, uh, college tuition preparation, you take a few courses, and, and they're fun. There's games, you get different little uh, tokens based off of what levels you complete, and it progresses and learns you and takes you to the next level or the next course, which would be beneficial to you, and it kind of learns your, your habits. Uh, education and counseling. Um, VR provides webinars, recorded webinars, uh, classroom sessions. Uh, during the pandemic, we just went all virtual, but uh, now we're back where you can have education and counseling available to you. It kind of talks whether you're on track nine. And again, John's one of our, our, our counselors uh, that you can meet with, but here's just some of the topics that, that's in the education once online. 
uh, courses you can take. Are you on track? Are you ready to retire? Um, I think one of them is keeping your eyes on the prize and you're almost there kind of thing. So again, a host of things available and it covers whether you're a hybrid member or plan one, plan two. Um, those of you that are dispersed throughout the field, uh, you've probably seen if you're here in this area, uh, Sorrell, but uh, at your agency. But these are all of the Mission Square, and most most people remember it was ICMARC uh, was 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 a group, but they converted over to Mission Square by name. But these are your field reps. Steve's the one that's out here now, uh, covering some of Northern Virginia and Richmond. So again, you can go through your DC plans uh, link on the VARetire.org. And we do a lot of partnering with Mission Square on some of the educational pieces as well, as they have the 457 plan and hybrid retirement. Mission Square, this is again, we've been doing a lot during, during pandemic, so we're always enhancing and, and looking to do some more exciting things online, but uh, we, we now have certified financial plan, we, meaning our TPA, Mission Square, is providing us a resource and they're certified financial planners. And this certified financial planner, you can make an appointment to meet with them, uh, talk about everything from debt reduction to budgeting help, um, what you need to do to protect loved ones. So it's, it's basically a licensed certified financial planner. The first 30 minutes is free. You can set that up. If you want to do a more detailed plan or basic plan, there's a fee. If you want to do a more comprehensive plan, there's a separate fee. But this certified financial planning service is another available resource and tool that you can get through through varetired.org backslash make a plan. And again, a host of information available through this uh, CFP individual. Group. Organizing your information, this is uh, something, again, you, you don't think about these things uh, that often until you get to the stage you're, you're, you're looking to move across the hall uh, with, with that particular group. But we always encourage individuals, while you can right now, start putting your documents and things in order uh, that you would need to have, not only at your fingertips, but should something catastrophic happen and, and, and a family member needs to, to take action for you. Because it's an emotional time. Uh, sometimes when you when you lose a loved one but here's a variety of documents and I think we have some outside but we want you to get organized and I'll uh, another short story before, before I pass it over to Jeannie is that um, uh, we, we meet with retired teachers we were just in Galax um, uh, a couple of weeks ago talking to that group and they're long living I think the teacher was 102 years old was sitting up front taking out her notepad her glasses and started writing down what we were saying and you see this group and you're like wow they're you know living long in retirement living a good life but one of the individuals brought up you know I have a go package me and my wife have a go package I'm like what are you talking he's telling the whole group of this now granted average age in the room was let's just say 90 maybe <laughs> Because when we started doing the Pledge of Allegiance, one of them said, hey, do you all remember when Dwight Eisenhower changed the, and I looked at Jeannie and I was like, I, I'm not in this conversation, but one of the things that you, you look at that group as they're preparing it, and this gentleman said, we have go packages in, my, in our nightstand. And I told my wife, you know, my go package is in yours and yours is in mine. So one morning, if I don't wake up and you do, open the nightstand and grab it because everything you need to have because it's a very emotional time. And it was a quick shock to hear him say that, but the majority of people in the room started thinking, here I am in my early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, and yeah, I would have to tell them, well, go find this, go find, well, I think the paperwork is for. So we started looking at that, started doing some of our own, which we had already had and some of the structure in place, but we encourage people to do that while you still have some cognitive ability to find all the stuff and, and put it in the right place. And there's a couple of key forms that we encourage and, and they're out on the table. The, the 900, uh, you fill that out and sign off and that allows someone to, to, to go in and, and get information and look at your account and, and help you understand what's going on and, and, and we can recognize who they are and can give them information. So 
they can speak on your behalf and look at stuff. The 901 allows them kind of more of a power of attorney, allows them to do things for you, not only look at the account, but move stuff around. And, and I know we always say the 900 are, is for people that you like, maybe a family member or not. The 901 is for people that you trust because they have the ability to change. So once that's documented and put on there, same thing with beneficiaries. If something changes in this and you don't, the person you trusted for whatever reason, you may not trust them anymore, we encourage you to go back out and update that because again, we will act on what last piece of information you provided to us that we have on file. So next slide, I'm gonna turn over to Jeannie to take us through the next uh, pieces of this. It's great to be here. Um, we appreciate the warm welcome. And um, again, if you have any questions, let us know. Robert's done a good job of giving you some benefit information, but suppose you leave today and you're like, hmm, Robert said something about I have life insurance coverage, and what did he say? Well, there's information at your fingertips. So go out to VA Retire, and what you'll find there is a wealth of information available for you. So you have the VRS website, and you would go under the, whoops, the benefits plan, benefits and programs and that's where you can learn more about your um, life insurance coverage so if you get home and you want to know more about that click on that it gives you a drop down menu it gives you direct access to life insurance I also invite you to go out to my VRS if you haven't established your account go and do that that was one of the action items that Robert gave at the top of his um, presentation. So it's right there available for you. You want to stay in touch with VRS in other ways? Well, we're on LinkedIn and um, Facebook. We um, post frequently on Facebook different topics, so you can um, sign up for that. And then also we do, for the member audience, we do a quarterly newsletter that goes out electronically. So once you sign up for your MyVRS account, you'll receive that on a quarterly basis. One of the items that Robert talked about is that special optional life window that will open up soon. So that is one of the feature articles in the member news that is coming up here in a week or so, and you'll get more information um, when that member news comes out. And you can take advantage of that. So now we're going to move along to looking at VRS from the big picture. So we've talked about you um, as an individual, the benefits that you have available to you as an individual, as a covered active VRS member, but let's look now at VRS um, from a big picture perspective. So this is basically the basic uh, data about VRS. We serve over 772,000 um, members and retirees. And we are the 46th largest pension plan in the world and the 17th largest in the U.S. This is a list of members that we are privileged to serve. So again, breaking down that 772,000 into um, buckets here. A couple of observations related to this. So we administer three plans, plan one, plan two, and the hybrid plan. Another observation from this slide is that the teacher group is the largest group that VRS serves, followed by political subdivision employees. So they are the counties, cities, and towns across the state that have adopted a resolution to provide VRS benefits, followed by um, state employees. Also, you'll note here that um, the hybrid plan is actually, if you look down at the bottom line here, the hybrid plan is actually now exceeded in numbers past plan one and plan two. For really all intents and purposes, the hybrid plan is the plan for new members in VRS. Except with the exception of um, law enforcement officers who are still going into plan two. So when you look at VRS, we, um, how do we fund the benefits that you as a member have? So first off, VRS collects contributions. So you as a member and your employer contribute money each month to VRS. We then invest that money and then through investment returns and um, funding, that money accumulates over time. So it's there as you are a um, retiree. 
and then you as a retiree go into your communities and spend that money and it serves as really as an economic engine for the various um, cities and towns and um, localities across the state. We um, pay, paid out um, 5.5 billion dollars last year. So a little more about the investment program at VRS. I talked about the um, member and contributions and the employer contributions coming in. So this is a little bit of an overview of what the investment program looks like um, from a total numbers perspective. So a couple of observations on this slide. Um, back in 2013, we were at about $53.1 billion. And now in 2022, um, we're about $101 billion. You will notice that basically over that period of time, we've had a steady increase and in fact almost doubled the um, fund amount during that period. So those contributions and those monies in the investment program come in, and so this pie chart illustrates how those monies are distributed over various asset classes. So the different colors here represent the different ways those monies are invested, everything from stocks to um, real estate to bonds to a variety of investment vehicles, creating a diversified portfolio. And what do we mean when we talk about diversification of a portfolio? Well, first, we use different, as I said, different vehicles. We use stocks, bonds, real estate, cash, and other um, assets as an investment strategy to diversify that portfolio. And diversification is really a mix of different types of investment. So you've heard of putting all of your eggs in one basket. Well, this is the opposite of that. It is diversifying that portfolio. It, um, we want to limit exposure to a single asset um, or strategy. We want to lower the risk of the overall portfolio and the risk of exposure um, associated with exposure to a single investment or strategy. Um, we also want to create a stable foundation that serves to moderate the impacts of any ups and downs as we experience those in the market. And finally, the Code of Virginia charges us to create a stable um, um, environment for the employers as they make contributions to VRS. So all of that goes into the formula that the investment team uses to um, diversify that portfolio. So if you want to learn more about the investment program at VRS, we have built out a new section of the website that's exclusively devoted to investments. So the address there would take you directly to the investment pages that we have established. So um, there are various uh, items out there that might be of interest. It talks about the um, investment objectives and strategies, how the assets are allocated across the various asset classes, the investment returns by fiscal year and then the market value of assets by fiscal year. We also have a four-part video series out there on investments, so I invite you to go out there and look that. We um, have gotten some of our investment team um, engaged with these videos and they sit and explain how they go about doing their jobs to support our members and retirees. So I think that would be a, um, a really good, um, you know, interesting venture out there for you to meet that investment team. You'll also find quarterly performance reports and also our chief investment officer describes each one of those quarters in a little um, essay that he does um, over here that accompanies that performance report. Now switching gears again, the, looking back at the General Assembly, I think Dylan provided you um, information and an overview, but just hitting it from a VRS perspective, um, one of the things that our two actions that the General Assembly and the Governor took were to make um, positive impacts on the plan, and the first was supporting the contribution rates. So for the State Police, Virginia Law Officers, and the Judicial Retirement. The Governor and General Assembly funded the contribution rates that the VRS Board certified for those rates. 
For the state and the teacher plans, they, um, in an effort to improve the funding level for those plans, the budget maintained the higher contribution rates from the prior fiscal year for those particular plans. So that is um, helping us maintaining those contribution rates at the same level as the previous um, biennium helps improve the plan health by lowering liabilities and generating savings over time. So that was the first action that the General Assembly um, took this session. The second action is um, that the General Assembly and the Governor did to improve the health of the plans was an infusion to the plan, so the putting monies into the plan. So um, they decided to put in a billion dollars, 750 million we have already received as of June 30, and that has gone into the plans. 250 million is slated to come to us in June 2023, and that is contingent upon um, the revenues. So this ongoing commitment to fully fund the contribution rates and providing additional one-time payments will generate future savings for the plans by moderating or reducing future cost while also improving the plan funded levels. And as we're talking about funding levels, we'll look at the state plan and the funding, st the funding uh, status of the state plan over time. And you will note that the blue lines there give you a historical perspective on the funded status of the state plan over time, while the green bars are the projected estimated funded status um, over time. Um, the funded status as of June 30th, 2021, on it was 86.5 percent and on an actuarial value it was 77.1 percent so on the over the last five years uh, on a market value basis the state plans funded status has improved by 15 percent so Robert had talked about the um, your checklist of things to um, be aware of and had given you a list of items, so we're just reiterating that at the end to remind you that you have um, some task ahead as a member to ensure that you're aware of your VRS benefits and taking advantage of those. If you have questions, we have available resources for you, so you can go to the VRS website, you can um, send us an email, you can call, or you can schedule a counseling session. If you participate in the defined contribution plans, so the 457 plan, the cash match plan, there are resources available for you there as well. So you've got the website, you've got the telephone number, email, and then they also offer um, counseling sessions so you can learn more about participating in that 457 plan and taking advantage of those savings. And Michael is going to come and do the wrap up for us. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask us. Thank you, Jeannie and Robert. Uh, again, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a lot of information that we've shared today. Um, and we make these presentations uh, frequently throughout the year, and particularly now as we're able to get back out and meet in person, uh, which is terrific. And each time you know, I hear uh, this presentation, even though we practice them, we, we give similar content and information, something always stands out to me that might hit me differently. Um, and I always you know, find that extremely Extremely helpful, and so as I was listening to, to the presentation here now and thinking, um, even different from what I heard when we gave similar presentation to our retirees uh, in the earlier breakout session, um, you know, starting early when we think about our contributions to retirement savings is critical. Um, but I think it's also important to note that it's never too late to start. So please, if you haven't started yet, we use that example of a 25-year-old versus a 40-year-old in the starting of the savings. There's earlier the better, but it's never too late to start. So please uh, maximize the 
the opportunities that uh, are available in terms of getting your savings underway to plan for your future. Um, I think also, as Robert touched on as well, um, making sure that your beneficiary information is up to date uh, and, and accurate is critical. Um, and going along with that, of course, is preparing um, that go bag, if you will, the go package. It's never too early to be thinking about those things. They're oftentimes the difficult conversations to have with family members, loved ones, but also internally ourselves, because we don't want to think about those days. <laughs> but if we plan for it, it will just make it so much easier for the folks that are caring for us and taking care of us in our most difficult times. Um, check your member benefit profile. Um, sometimes what we'll often, uh, I shouldn't say often, but sometimes what we'll hear uh, from folks as they get near that retirement age and they start to plan is that's the first time they're looking at their member benefit profile and then and then something doesn't seem right or, or they realize they might have a little bit further to go than they thought they did. Make sure that you're reviewing that when it comes out each year. It's very helpful in terms of planning, preparing. Um, and the last thing, and I think this is something that ex certainly extends beyond uh, your retirement account, and it's just in the, the world that we live in today, be careful of fraud that's out there. Um, when we talk about claiming your account, that's not only for your VRS account, that's for your Social Security benefit account as well. Um, there are just too many bad actors out there. Uh, we have a dedicated cybersecurity team. Uh, we monitor our, our uh, information and systems 24-7, um, but, but those bad actors are working just as hard to get at your information, um, and we see it uh, attempted every day. So um, we're going to continue to do our part um, and appreciate your help in doing your part as well. So together we can make sure that our, our information is safe and, and as secure as possible. Um, so, before we wrap it up and, and open for questions, we always like to uh, finish with some trivia. Um, this one is, is, well, I think it's tricky. Uh, so, if you were paying attention to the slides, um, you have to let me ask the question first in full. Uh, if you hit your buzzer too early, everybody got a buzzer, right? <laughs> no? Uh, but you have to let me ask the question in full. Um, the only person that's not allowed to participate is my friend from ODU because as a Hokie, I'm still spiteful and bitter about <laughs> losing. So you cannot play. Just kidding, just kidding. Um, okay, so question. Raise your hand. Yeah, that's right, you have to raise your hand once the question is complete. Uh, what was the big event that occurred for the fund in 2021? So it's a tricky one. We have a hand. Not, not quite. That is true. That was 2022. Um, the question again was, what big event happened for the fund in 2021? Well, that is, we'll give it to you. We, 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 we surpassed, uh, not from the beginning, but we surpassed 100 billion. So we, so you did pick up on because good detail. <laughs> So in 2021, the fund surpassed for the first time $100 billion in assets. So uh, just uh, another remarkable achievement. So again, thank you very much. Um, if time permits, we would welcome some questions, but I would also remind you as well um, that we are leaving these sheets here. So if you think of a question afterwards or just didn't want to bring it up in front of the group, please um, fill out the form. We do take those back and we uh, always uh, are certain to respond. So thank you very much. And I do have a question. You said that they're opening up the optional life insurance uh, from October to November. Is the rates going to still be the same as they currently are? You answer that, Rob. Yes. Yes, yes, they are. And that window of opportunity, again, it's increasing in your coverage, but the rates are still. Okay, so the rates are the same in the handbook that it is to have new employees. Yes, now, okay. the, 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 again, the issue is going to be if you just, and, and it's more detailed than the, the explanation that you've gone on the look, but it's just if you're bumping it up one time, you can go and have more coverage, but the coverage amount is still the same. So you can get, right now, one up to four times, you can go up to eight. But, 
Correct, but if you weren't never in it, you can't yeah, if you weren't never in it, you, it would be like a new employee. Right, but, right. So, so back in the day, I missed it when I first started however many years ago. So this is my one time to go back in. Correct. New employees would just come in and have that option if they want to. Correct, correct, because I have employees now uh -huh. who says, can I do the optional life? And I said, yeah, you can do it, but you got to go through the physical and all of that. So with them opening up to everyone now, it's just like if you were a new employee. Yes. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you said, you, you yes. said, you, you look at me, 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 but this is uh, something that occurred uh, during the, uh, the legislative session this uh, past year. Um, and when I was going, uh, from the emails that we get from um, the VGA, um, there was a list of uh, House bills that were also being considered during the legislative period. And one thing that came out that really grabbed my attention involved VRS. And that is, uh, that was uh, House Bill 645. Now, 645 was requiring VRS to divest its holdings in energy companies. And um, when I read uh, through it, uh, fortunately, it didn't make it through committee. And I went on to speak to Rick Fowler because uh, there was some lingo in it that wasn't really clear for, you know, that I was saying. But fortunately, it didn't go through. But my concerns and issues about it. <clears throat> Let's just say that it did pass. You know, VRS had uh, had it to with uh, divest the stakes and energy companies. So, if we did that, then VRS would have been required to divest its holdings in um, tobacco companies. And then maybe another bill would come out. Uh, VRS would have had to take a percentage of its assets to invest in green energy companies. Um, so, what is your concerns? about the potential uh, of the potential politicization of our uh, of our retirement system so um, that it's, it's a great question and obviously um, was a bill of, of concern during uh, this last session um, those do come up from time to time um, Interesting, VRS does not uh, take a stance with respect to um, legislative proposals, um, by and large, except for divestiture. Um, we uh, have to follow the Internal Revenue Code, as well as the Code of Virginia, which requires uh, that VRS um, uh, maintain its fiduciary responsibility. Uh, and we believe in doing so um, that maximizing those opportunities for investment is critical to the fund and to the members' long-term benefit. So, um, we did present uh, information uh, to the General Assembly as well as the Governor's Office explaining um, the concerns that we saw with respect to any potential legislation that would require that. Um, the difficulties that it would impose in terms of um, looking at our individual investments and, um, uh, and furthermore what impacts it may have on the fund. So it is something that we continue to keep an eye on uh, and monitor closely as those um, bills do come up from time to time time, um, but at the end of the day, it's VRS's responsibility to um, uh, maintain its fiduciary responsibility to the trust and to the members, and so we do believe that, um, um, that, that maintaining our investment opportunities to their maximum uh, is, is most appropriate. Is that fair? Um, yes, sir. My point for the day here, uh, I insurance to be made So when... 25% each year, or your basic coverage is 25% reduction each year down to no less than, I think it was 8,900 and something, but bottom line is 25%. Yeah, it's something like that, but you know, by the fourth year, you're down to 25%. It won't go any lower than 8,000. It's all based off of when you retire, what your average final compensation is. So that 8,000 will be for someone that's probably have a lesser retirement, 25% of your retirement. Is that good? So, you know, each year, so by the fourth year, you're down to 25% of what it is. Yes, somebody else, no. 
Oh, hold on one second. Yes, ma'am. Going back to his question, you are a fiduciary, correct? Which means you have to work through the best for us, regardless of what they say. Are you classified as a fiduciary? The board, uh, the board of trustees are the fiduciaries for the fund. The, okay. the board of trustees and nine members, yes, ma'am. So regardless of what the politicians say, you're out there to do the best for us and not based on what they say. <laughs> It's a it, it, we have a constitutional responsibility, uh, and in, and certainly in, in a, uh, as well with the Internal Revenue Code to ensure um, that we have to be uh, uh, we VRS has to be uh, good stewards of the fund uh, to maximize the interests um, of the members uh, and retirees. It doesn't mean that there aren't, you know, legislation happens and then we're bound by, you know, legislative requirements and things. So as you mentioned, there's, um, it's, not it's not so simple um, to bifurcate between those two things. Um, when legislation changes at the federal or state level that impacts BRS, then we are bound to that. Um, um, I would not speak to that, but I would tell you that um, that we we are always conscious and uh, of um, potential legislative impacts uh, and monitor those things closely. Uh, and and it's our responsibility as a staff to ensure that we are providing the best information available to the board of trustees so that they can make those decisions that they believe to be prudent uh, and, and in the best interest of those uh, that the board serves. Another question in the back. Yes, ma'am. Do you mind just repeating the question? I'm not sure I heard all of it. I'm sorry. Why is, I just want to know, where I can tell everybody's share that is not taxable is like $279 or $297 a year that is not taxed? Why is it so low when you're putting in like 5% of your I think, I think you're referring to your W-2 that you get at the end of each year and it in the box. Um, I want to be sure that we get you the right answer for that. So what I'd like to do is take that back and get the, the explicit answer for you. I don't, I don't want to um, misspeak or misstate something here. So we will get that information for, and back to the group. I want to thank BRS uh, for coming. Uh, they're always so faithful to us for our annual meeting. But we certainly have a lot of questions. But anytime you have a question, you can always send it in to info at bga.org. And I will uh, pass it over. Don't expect too quick of an answer because we are being flooded with emails right now. In fact, I'm still getting emails on telework. But anyway, that's behind. But anyway, uh, I do appreciate it and um, thank you all so much and take a quick break.